chapter 1, verses 12 through 21, 22, depending on where I stop. Okay? And my, my question to you is this, this morning. Who is Jesus? Hmm. Who is Jesus? And a lot of times we get, we get caught up because we don't know who he is. And when you don't know who he is, you can't greet him in the way that he should be greeted. And you don't get the benefit of the relationship that you could have with him because you don't know him. So who is Jesus? Well, let me tell you this. First thing about Jesus, Colossians 1.15. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He's the exact representation, the exact, not, not somebody different. He is the exact representation. If this image is word image, you, we kind of use it in a modern, uh, modern way, meaning icon. <laughs> he's the icon of God. He's, a, he's the, uh, uh, John said this, uh, in the beginning was the word, the logos. Yeah. We, we, we use logo. Yeah. So when you see the golden arches, uh -huh. what do you think about you think about McDonald's, don't you? Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. So when you see certain logos, what does that what does that tell you? If you saw the emblem for a Mercedes Benz, would you know that's a Mercedes Benz? Yeah. Rather than a Hyundai? Yeah. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Because you know the different logos. Yes. Well, Jesus is the logos. The word, and when you see him, you see God. Yeah. He's the image of the invisible God, the exact representation. That's uh, now Jesus makes the invisible God because nobody has seen God at any time. Didn't the Bible tell us that? But you've seen Jesus. They've seen Jesus, they've walked with him, they handled him. Yeah. So Jesus is the exact representation. So if you want to know what God is like, study Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, we look at the Old Testament God where God was, you know, fierce, or wrath. Uh, and then we look at Jesus and you say, well, he's more compassionate, he's loving, and but you got to remember that there never was a time that Jesus wasn't. So even in the Old Testament, even though we don't use the name Jesus, Jesus was with the Father at all times. So nothing happened in the Old Testament that Jesus wasn't a part of. All right. He is the exact representation of God. Colossians 2 9 says, For in him the fullness of the deity dwelled bodily. The fullness of God dwelled in Jesus. The fullness. Not some, you know, we have to think that he came down, he left, he left all his powers and everything in heaven. And um, you know, we got we have some terms for that. Okay. But that's not true. He is the fool. In him, it pleased God that the fullness of the deity dwelled. That's who Jesus is. And see, so once you understand who Jesus is, you can begin to live a life that's richer. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So when you understand that who Jesus is, that he's bringing abundant life, that life is for you. Amen. Amen. That life is for you. And then he says this in Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. Yes, sir. And no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Meaning this, if you want to know who God is, you've got to come through Jesus. 
Yeah. If you don't want to know who the father is, you, never, you can't go around him. Now, you've always heard that only one road uh, leads to uh, leads to God. You know, you, you, you got to go through that right path. Well, that's, that's not really true. All roads lead to Jesus. See, because anybody can come to him. All roads. You know, it, I mean, because he came to save the whole world. So that means that all roads, you don't care what you are. You can be, you can be Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever. You can come to him. But when you come to him, only one road leads to the Father, and that's through him. <laughs> that's who Jesus is. And then Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. Now, firstborn doesn't mean first created. Okay, what it means is it is a position of honor and stand and, and statue. Meaning, if you're the firstborn, you know, in a, in a family, the firstborn usually have a little more privileges than those who come along later. Uh, in, the, in, 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 the, in the Hebrew Hebrew tradition, the firstborn was the one that got the double portion. All right. The son was the one that got the double portion. Uh, so that's Jesus, the firstborn of all creation. That's the one with the double portion. That's the one we can look to. All right. Firstborn of all creation. And then this. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He's before, and in him all things hold together. The Bible says that the things hold together by the power of his word. By the power of his word, meaning he spoke the worlds into existence. Look, we're still, we are still finding out that there are galaxies out there and that we have never even thought existed. And so when we discover them, we put a name on them, don't we? Got names on all this stuff. Guess what? They already been named. Amen. <laughs> yeah, they already been named. He said he 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 knows he knows all the stars by name. He put they already put names on. Okay, so that's that's who Jesus is. And then this, Jesus. This is number two. Jesus rules the future. Now you say, in what way does he rule the future? Well, Jesus is the power of creation. He spoke the worlds into existence. Right? He, he rules the future. Uh, through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that was made. He is the one. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Meaning this, that this world that you were born into is a temporary to be born again, you're going to be born in the spirit. That is the permanent, eternal world that we are destined for. That, that's who Jesus is. Jesus is the preserver of creation. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Yes, sir. Now, how many times have you seen the sun get out of place? <laughs> just, doesn't, just doesn't get out of place. How much time do we lose? It, it, the time is perfect. Now our clocks, we have to reset. We have to set them. Pretty. We have to change them a, a second or two every so so many years, so we can we can keep in time with the sun <laughs> and the planet revolving. But we don't we don't have to you don't worry about the sun falling on you, do you? You worry about the moon dropping out of the sky? No. It held together by the power of His word. Then Jesus is the purpose for the creation. It was made for him. <laughs> it was made for him. For him, all things were created. Things in heaven, on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority, all things were created by him and for him. Mm. Who is Jesus? That's the guy who was on that donkey that the people didn't recognize. All right. Yeah. Huh? That's who Jesus is. Now we're getting, we're coming up we're coming up on Easter. Easter meaning 
Resurrection Sunday. That is when Jesus got up from the grave with all power in his hand. But think about it. He gets up, he's got all power, he's carried out sins, he, he, he's atoned for our sins, and we don't know him. How can you take advantage of that? I would suggest that if you had been left an inheritance of a few million dollars, and you didn't find out about it until they said, we're going to have to pull the plug. What's your last this is your last day on earth and you find out that you had all these resources at your disposal. That would be a sad day for you. Not that you not that you were you, your life was ending, but that you had life that you never took advantage of. And see that's what is happening to a lot of people now. We have life, we're not taking advantage of it. All right. But in the end, when we see Jesus. That's when he's going to have to wipe away all these tears that the Bible yes, talks about. Yes, <laughs> and then this, Jesus is the purpose for the creation. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Look, he's expanding. He's exp he wants the same kind of kingdom, same kind of operation, same kind of organization, the same kind of righteousness, the same kind of living here on earth as they do in heaven. Now just think about it. A lot of times what, what happens is when you're doing something, just think about it. Would that be acceptable to God? Could I do that in heaven? Would Jesus smile on that? Would he pat me on the back on that? Or would he reprimand me for that? He is the purpose for the creation. And then this, number three, and I'm almost through, is this. Jesus reconciles the fall. Now that's, we really like that. We really like, he reconciles the fall. Meaning this, he carried our sins. He bore our sins. He bore our sin. And said that, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. He reconciled us back to God through Jesus Christ. Jesus took all our sins. Can you imagine that? Dying for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes. And you, you got all Scott's. God scot free. Huh. We are healed. And I was thinking about, look at the, our weather today. Just think about this. Look at our weather today. Every few weeks, we've got this storm blowing across the U.S. And the Midwest and the, and the East, man, they've been catching it on the chin. I mean, they really, even California getting some rain. They, they, they're not used to that kind of rain. And they have fire. As soon as the fire is out, here comes the rain. Wash everything out of the hills. They, they get a double win. Well, what does the Bible say about that? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Huh? Huh? Humble themselves. We, look, we're, we're surprised the folks. Huh? Well, humble themselves. Now, he ain't talking about all the other people. He says that the people who call by my name. Right. And so there's a lot of people not called by his name. They call by a lot of other names. Amen. Yeah. Okay? So he ain't talking about them. He's talking about the ones that are, that are called by his name. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal themselves and pray. Seek his face. Turn. Turn from their wicked ways. Because he, he knows there's some stuff in there we got to stop doing. Then, he says, he'll hear from heaven. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Forgive their sins and heal their land. You want to be healed? That's the, that's the formula. Amen. That's who Jesus is. He's given us everything we need for life and happiness. Okay. Now, look. 
The maker of everything is Jesus. I remember sitting in a biology class and uh, the professor was just going on about uh, the how over you know millions of years the the, the ocean uh, was lapping on the on the land and and uh, created some little uh, finally some little single cell amoeba uh, was created and then it split and next thing you know you got you know what I'm saying that, that's silly. I got to have a lot of faith to believe that. That's science, though. See, that's, that's science. I'm, I'm saying I have to have more faith to believe, to believe science yeah. than to believe in the beginning God created. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on top of all of that, when the scientists go back and, and start unraveling the things that they can unravel, what do they find? They find exactly what God said in the Bible Amen. now. They just keep going back, keep going back, keep going back. He spoke the world's in existence for nothing. How, how far back can we go? Mm -hmm. We keep going, we keep going, we, we're down to so, so, something so small they call it dark matter. Uh -huh. Can't put a name on it. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced that when they finally get down to nothing, they're going to hear this booming voice. Amen. Let there be. <laughs> huh? And release it. Because it, it, what? when he said it, it came into existence. Yes. Yes. That's who Jesus is. Therefore, if Jesus was riding through DCF territory on this Palm Sunday, uh -huh. Would the rocks be louder than the saints? Come on. <laughs> will we have an idea? Will we have an idea who he is? Uh -huh. Or will we look over there and say, who is that crazy guy <laughs> on that donkey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. When we don't know, when we don't know, here's what happens. When we don't know, here's what happens. We give up all of the happiness and righteousness and comfort and health and wealth that could be ours. Mm -hmm. We just, we give it up. You remember in uh, 1 John chapter, chapter 3, but he said that we will see, we're, we're going to be like Jesus. We're going to be like him. Can you imagine being like him? He said, we, we, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. Yes. Not as he was, not as he will be, <laughs> but as he is. We will see him as the son of God. We'll be like him. Yes. That means that God is going to do some elevating in it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. He is going to elevate us to a standard that we can't even imagine now. That we will be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be an awesome day. Yes, huh? Yes. And that's going to be an awesome day when you can look over there and say, oh, that's a, Amen. you can name that star. Amen. It was created uh, hmm, 30 billion years ago. And that's the guy over there who created it. Yeah. That's my brother. <laughs> we have to understand that when we understand Jesus, when yeah. we know who he is, yeah. we can live a life that God wants us to live. And that's the key. That is the key. Who is Jesus? Jesus is our Savior. Yeah. Jesus is our Lord. He's yeah. our Master. He's our ever-present help in the time of trouble. Yeah. That's who Jesus is. He is the Son of God. He was a man that came to earth to, uh, to bore our sins. Yeah, yeah. And that he did. And that he did. He taught. He walked this earth. Now, if you think about it, here's a guy who, if you look at the area that he lived in, it's a small area of this earth. But the impact on the lives of the people yeah. 
is astronomical. What other man do you know has had an impact on the earth where we divide the time on our calendars based on his birthday? My, my. <laughs> based on his birthday. My, my. <laughs> Who is Jesus? Jesus is the radiance of God's glory. The exact representation of his being. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. And he is seated now at the right hand of majesty on high. All power in heaven and earth has been given.